Marine Corps snipers, like that's yeah, the creme really de la creme, weird. baby. It's a big thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then what it was like as uh, being deployed in that position. So whether mm -hmm. it, whether it's a war story, I don't care. Or if it's just okay. the experience, let's just get into those things. Okay. So I did, I ended up doing, um, first deployment as just 0311 grunt, um, in, uh, Ramadi, El Anbar province of Iraq, 2004 to 2005. That's um, the shit. it was a fucking brutal, brutal time and place. My first day of combat was hopefully will be, is, was the worst day of my life and hopefully will be the worst day of my life. We had a massive, I, this is like my first time outside the wire, massive IED, uh, a vehicle borne, uh, improvised explosive device, oh, shit. car, car packed full of explosives. We drove past in our truck. Oh, okay. So up. it was parked. It was parked. Okay. Yeah. Blew, blew up as we were driving past everyone in the convoy thought we were all dead. Massive fireball overpressure just felt like everything like I felt like every joint got expanded felt like my teeth popped out um, Really buddy. Yeah, my buddy took shrapnel through the eyeball blew out the back of his head Bled to death all over me. We had everyone else was either un half unconscious or like messed up in the truck um, You know it, you had uh, uh, guys like literally rifles get blown out. You had um, um, people kind of bleeding from everywhere total like shit show like this is like welcome to the jungle and we were getting shot at so it was an ambush right what were you guys driving in were you an MRAP? we were or... in an up we were in a seven ton we were in the back of a seven ton truck so it was like an open bed truck with it with, with the armor on the sides but we were like sitting up facing outboard and so it, it hit us i got lucky you know i like yeah. completely lucky i literally had like basically the next day I had some like severely chapped lips because they were burnt and like i was shaving and a little piece of shrapnel came out of my neck and that was about it like i didn't <laughs> even know that was there uh it was a it was a rough day and like but what it did was from that point on it for all of us like oh shit this is fucking real better that happened on the first day than the last day of the deployment because that area at the time dude i don't care who you were i don't care what your job was you saw combat like it was like yeah. it was just every it was a free-for-all it was completely insane um and we were learning how to do this counterinsurgency thing as we went so we were literally burning uh, building the airplane in flight i saw you know officers who hadn't slept in three days i saw guys that had been you know shot at and blown up more times than you know any movie you've ever seen like it was just one of those things it was just because of the time and place yeah. So we're all figuring it out. And like that sort of baptism by fire, both in the literal and metaphorical sense, like forged everything and how we were for the rest of that deployment. And like, you know, it was it was a lot to get through. And then but it was funny because a lot of us tried to stay like a lot of us were like, hey, like the new units coming in because at the time they were hurting for people, taking a lot of casualties. And then so they were allowing certain jobs and certain people to stay in country longer than you were supposed to. And they actually came down from like headquarters of Marine Corps and they were like, absolutely not. No one serving in, in any of these units at any of this time. They are absolutely not staying any longer. Like they, you are gone. You are getting out of country when your unit is set to rotate back. Really? Because, yeah, because it was too much. It was like guys were just like, well, I'll just stay here. And like, no, you're, no, you're not, dude. Like you need to go back. Like there, trust me, there's Marines here that can handle it. And so you, that it was just a chaotic time, man. And so coming back from that like that was my first like okay you know welcome to the party how you know, long like were I you said, there seven months and and so Shit. yeah it, and and it got better as it went along like we were jealous when they first like went into fallujah because we wanted to do that in ramadi like we couldn't do that we couldn't shut down the city pull all those you know civilians out and say we're coming in to fight like we had to just because it was the provincial uh capital of the el Ambar province and there's a lot of significance there like you, you just had to go there and it was just like it, it just every day shit was happening i mean, it was like i think it was like the one month we were there there was like over 300 ied attacks or something then that's just like improvised explosive attacks like in in one month i mean that's that's 10 a day like it's yeah. not that big of a city you know what i mean so it, it was uh that and then it, it was just a lot going on and, and it was it was a, it was that wild west time frame where we were all trying to figure out how this works and fighting in among a, a a civilian populace who doesn't want to be involved you know it was just it was it was it was what nuts was, and then what was your main job as an infantryman were you uh five uh, 249 what were you what was your job so i was just rifleman i just, mean so, okay yeah i just carried an m4 and, and you know, what was, was your mindset like day one you get there and you're like all right we got to go out outside the yeah. wire tomorrow 
Yeah. What's your mindset prior to the shit hitting you than then afterwards? Well, you we don't know. You're ready to go, so you're nervous, you're anxious. You're like, okay, here it is. And then we got to like our fob that I was at the forward operating base was called uh, Camp Snake Pit, and it was just like it was a pit. It, yeah, there. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it was like, here you go. And it wasn't in one of the bigger bases that are there. This is a small company size, you know, you know, 120 guys at this at this outpost. And then you have different like stations out in the city that you would rotate in and out of, like even a little bit farther out from there and at these different points. But, you know, that was our point. And I just remember coming in and seeing the guys that had been there for six months that were rotating out. And I was like, oh, this isn't going to be good. <laughs> like th this is just, just the looks on their faces. I was like, yeah. okay, like this is not going to go well. Like the, we, we are in the shit. Like I know that. And you didn't have to describe it. It was just like, you knew when you saw these people that it was just like all hope had been lost from their eyes. And you're like, this, this is not going to be good. Yeah. And so it was really rough at first, you know, and then partly because of winter, you know, then was in there. So things slow down and, and things don't happen. But like we, you know, we, we did, the best we could with what we had and who we had. We had, I, I saw the best and worst in people. I was fortunate that I had some commanders and overall people in charge that were really, really, really good Marines. 